Well, hey guys, it's Mike Festiva here. Welcome back. In this video, in part two of Drawing in Fusion 360, we're actually going to take this drawing from the previous video that we sketched out on paper and we figure out how to measure it up. We're actually going to dive into the program now, talk about a few basic features. I'm going to start off really simple to not overwhelm you guys. I'm going to assume that you guys are starting from scratch, ground zero. That's where I started from. And if you haven't, this might not be as relevant to you, but you might learn something anyways. We're going to go super simple. And as we continue on the series, we're going to do more and more complex things and uh, so let's just get going on this program we'll bring you guys in here and uh, start drawing out this part okay guys before I even start drawing the part I want to walk you guys around fusion 360 a little bit not to overwhelm you just show you a few basic features keep in mind get a mouse if you don't have one don't try to use this pad like I mentioned in the previous video this roller can zoom in and zoom out and you also can push down the roller in the center of it and drag around the screen Okay, so we're going to go right up here. First things first, we're going to go up here and we're going to hit this cube where it says top. It brings us to a top view because we're just drawing in 2D. That's all we want. Now over here, if you want to change the inches or millimeters, you're going to go over uh, document settings. You're going to click that, kind of come down over to here. Click that and right over here on the side, you got inches, which I'm going to be drawn in. You got millimeters, you got feet, you got a wide range of stuff. We don't need to actually change that. I'm going to keep it in inches, cancel. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up here. Design is where we're going to draw all our stuff in. Um, we're not going to worry about any of these other features in here because this drop down menu, there's really not much of this is relevant to us other than manufacturing, but that's going to be for a future video. So again, we're going to stand design. We're going to go right over here to this little green plus sign, create sketch. So we're going to left click once on that this is kind of our zero point it's just a reference point i usually like to draw to this side of it it's not that big of a thing um it's just kind of a zero reference point on here we can set that later gonna grab the center roller button to grab the screen and move it down this is how i like to do it here so this grid work right here is going to be where we're going to be drawing we're going to left click twice on the grid and it opens up to be ready for drawing as you see our tools changed up here. So again, I'm going to grab it with the center button, drag this down, and see this little sketch palette right over here? You're going to want to set yours up the same way. I don't have 3D drawing on. It's not checked because we don't need to draw a three-dimensional. Simple things like snap and grid means that these are the grid lines. And basically snap allows your tools to snap to each section of the grid. Okay, with that being said, we got the setup for drawing. So again, like you can zoom in, zoom out with the roller. So to draw our basic part, I'll put a little overlay over on the side here of the part that we're going to draw. And this part right here, we're going to start off real simple. There's key commands, hotkeys, key commands that I can hit L for line, T for trim, things like that, but to not complicate it and bug you guys with anything else, we're going to just use the basic buttons up here. We're going to go up to line which is right here. Oh, another thing is we got these little quick jump buttons right up here, but you also have create, which has a lot of other drop down stuff. Circle, like center, diameter circle, two point circle, all these have extra tools in it. Mirror is the one that I use all the time. We'll get to all this later though. We're going to go right back to the simple tool, line. We're going to draw two parts here. Okay, and we're going to draw a simple way to do it and a longer way, but you will learn other techniques with it. So we're going to come down here. We're going to click on this anywhere on the grid. You can draw this out to the size that you want. You can come up or down and tell you your degrees. But we want to come out to four inches. You can drag this thing out and then left click again when you get to four inches. Or we can just backspace and hit four and then enter. Simple way to do it. Quick key would be L, but we're going to go right up here. We're going to draw a box right here. Going to come up, four, enter, zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. Line. Remember, this is the slow way to do it here, but uh, we're just drawing it out, and you guys can see what we're doing here. You can get comfortable with it. And then when you want to get rid of your tool, because no matter what, it's going to try to draw another line somewhere, you hit the escape button at the upper portion of your keyboard, and that will take away your tool. Those are the little things that people didn't explain to me when I was trying to look over videos. They didn't cover that. They just knew that was a way to get out of their tool, but they never hesitated to ever tell anybody. Okay, so we got our box here. That's one way to do it. Or we can come over here and hit the 
two point rectangle tool and we can draw another one. Fusion 360 has some cool features. If you find a corner or a line, it will give you this grid work so you can stay in, in the same plane with it. Okay, so we're gonna draw, a, um, draw another part right here. This is a two point rectangle tool and what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit four and that switches it right here. And then we're gonna hit tab and that takes it over to this other one. We're gonna hit four again and then we're gonna hit enter. So now we got a box. See, there's two ways about going about it. Another thing I want to tell you guys about is these black lines with these measurements and everything, they're not actual drawing lines. They're just like representing the measurement. And you can grab them, left click, and pull them in, out, move them around, wherever you want. If you want to resize something too, let's see, I'll draw a line up here. Let's draw one more line to show you guys this. I'm going to draw this out to, say, 5 inches. Hit enter. Okay, we don't like that at 5 inches. We're going to left click twice. Now all of a sudden we can resize it. We can backspace 4.5. Enter. There we go. We got that size. We don't want that on there at all. You can hit the quick key for trim or you can hit the scissors up here and you can any line you highlight will turn this kind of purpley color and you left click and that line's gone. Again, if you go over here and you hit a line here, if you forget to take off your trim tool with the escape button, that line's gone. Okay, what do we do? We can hit escape and we can back arrow. There we go. So anytime you want to remove a tool, you hit escape. And keep in mind these back arrows and four arrows are very helpful for you. So we got our two boxes. We're going to put these four holes on the outside corresponding with the corners. So here's another thing with line tool you can do that uh, I never, people would jump around between construction line and draw line. And the frustrating thing about all that was um, they never explained. So I'm going to draw a line real quick here. We went up to the line tool. Going to draw, let's say, a four-inch line. Now, exit out of there because we don't want to draw another line continuously off of it. Escape, I should say. Uh, we're going to go over here, and we're going to click on the line. Now we're going to hit X. See how the line all of a sudden turned to a dotted segmented line? That's a construction line. You can use them for measurement lines. You can use them for mirroring off of. Like if I ran a line right down the center of this, if I want to mirror parts from this side, it would mirror off of that line and mirror them to this side. But you can make any line a construction line by left clicking and hitting X. But you can make any construction line by left clicking and hitting X a draw line. Draw lines are basically like your cut lines and this can be used for mirroring or just construction or reference lines if you want to reference certain points. Okay, so we're going to hit the trim tool, get rid of that construction line we put up here. I'm hoping this stuff makes sense to you. Now we hit escape to take off the trim tool. So we're going to come over here. We got our part and uh, basically what I need to do is I need to set this corner hole five-eighths of an inch down and five-eighths of an inch in. So we're going to come over to line. Basically, we're going to hit X. And right over here, this little point right here means it's construction. Watch, I'll hit X again. See a blue point, the box goes away from it. So we're going to hit X. We're on construction line. I'm going to come right over here. Let's zoom in a little bit. And uh, this program is pretty intuitive like it gets close and it'll snap you right to the corner like this watch this if i want to do a line down the center boom gets that little uh pyramid right there in the center when i'm to the center of the drawing so you know you're centered between this corner and this corner we're going to come back over here again i'm going to left click we're going to drag down we're going to backspace and we're going to actually do five eighths into here and then hit enter and we're going to go to line again and we're going to do the same thing, backspace, five, eight, enter. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the circle tool. We got center diameter. If you don't have that up on your tool, it would be down the drop bar. You have a bunch of different circles you can pick from, but we're going to go for the one that's up here on mine. And we're still on construction line because this area here is blue. So we're going to exit out, of we hit the X to remove that construction circle on there. Basically all your drawings can be construction lines or draw lines. So we're center point that, click on it, and we're going to bring this out. You can do your fractions right here or your thousandths. We're going to actually do 31 64ths, 31 64ths, enter. 
So it has a measurement here. If you want to resize this just like our other drawing, you can click up here and we can say we can make this 0.5 half inch hole. We don't like that, we can backspace. There we go. All right, so we got that hole up in the corner there, and this is gonna be a long way to draw these holes, but I'm gonna show you the mirroring tool doing this. So we're gonna go up here, gonna hit on line, and we're gonna to come to the center here before we draw anything, we're gonna hit X. There's our center. Left click, drag this down. This will tell you over here the degrees, and you can set your own degrees in here by hitting the tab button to get to that bar or set a certain length. We can just bring it down, it jumped to the four inch point. Left click, got a construction lines. We're gonna come back over here, find the center of this one. We're gonna come back over, left click. Now we're gonna hit escape tool to get out of the line drawing tool. Okay, so we have that. Now we're gonna use the mirror function. I think you guys will like this. This is super useful, like all the grills and stuff I built for the quad truck and the grills I built for the uh, six by six. Basically, you draw half the grill and then you mirror the other half. It makes it a lot easier. So we go down to create, we're gonna come down to mirror, click that. Now, right here, object select, it's already highlighted. We wanna select this object because this is the one we wanna mirror. Really simple, mirror line. We're gonna select that now. We wanna mirror, which line do we want? Do you want this part to bounce over to here or down over to here? We're gonna bounce it over to here. So we're gonna select this line. Shows you a little where it's gonna be and you hit okay. Boom, so we got that all mirrored over there. We're gonna go up to create again, mirror, select that line and that object, select those two objects. Select the mirror line, hit that, shows us where they're gonna be, we hit okay. So now we got our part there. And uh, only thing we need to do now is draw basically a circle in the center. We got our little construction lines, or it shows us where our center is. We're gonna go up to circle, and I think we're on construction. Take that off. We're gonna drag that out so you can drag it in or out to whatever size you want, or we can just hit backspace and put it on our own size. Uh, we need one and three quarters, so we're gonna go 1.37, or we don't need one and three quarters, one and three eighths, so 1.375, enter. So we got that on there now, and we can go through here and hit the T for the quick key, or we can hit the trim tool up here. And we're gonna just get rid of our construction lines, clean up this drawing a bit. So you just kinda of gotta go through and click off all your construction lines here. If you make a mistake and hit like this one, for instance, just remember you can go back to your arrow back and hit it twice, should be, there we go. So we're gonna get rid of this construction line. Let's go up to trim again. And we got construction lines up here. We got them here. And remember, we had one up here. You gotta drag this around a little bit. That'll delete the whole line. When you drag it up a little bit, you see the segmented part up here. There we go. It's kind of frustrating trying to find that segmented one. Click on that, we got rid of that. Escape, take off the trim tool. So we got that part finished here. Now we're gonna go over here and do uh, draw these four circles, the holes around here, but we're gonna do it in a different fashion. We're gonna go up here, gonna hit line, gonna hit X for construction. Gonna do the exact same thing, down five eighths. Back, five eighths, enter. Now we're gonna go over here. Five eighths over, backspace, five eighths, enter. Now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna draw this circle. we we'll take it off construction, that's X. Now we got a regular draw line. Backspace, 31, 60 fourths, enter. Okay, now we're gonna go over to create here and we're gonna go down to not circle pattern but rectangular pattern. And we're gonna select our object because it's highlighted here. We wanna select that as our object. We want how many holes in this direction moving over. Our arrow represents that direction. We want this whole pattern to be spaced out. Let's see our drawing says two and three quarters of an inch or backspace. 2.75. All right, now we actually wanna come over here 
and we want ours to be two holes going down and because we're going down off of this drawing if we were going up i'll show you what would happen if we just put 2.75 in here our holes will continue on up i'll show you that 2.75 see our holes where they go they're up here because we told it to move in the positive direction what we need to do is go down here and put minus in here there we go our holes are where we want them now Keep that in mind. It can be a little frustrating using this program sometime. I could have actually set this hole down here as my reference hole and reference everything off of, and I wouldn't have had to put that minus sign because everything would be moving up towards the positive side. Uh, this will make more sense the more you guys use this, but we can hit OK now. I don't use this program, this uh, rectangular hole grid program that often. I usually just do the first style with the mirroring and the holes. It usually works for me, especially when I'm doing slots for like engine plates and stuff like that. So we got that. Let's get rid of our construction lines because we don't really need them. Trim tool. Trim that. Trim that. We got this guy right up there. Oop, got the wrong line here. Let's go back. I wish it would make it easier to snap. There we go. Escape tool. Now we need to figure out where the center of this thing is. I think you can hit circle and we can bring this, double check this. Circle. Let's go up to, here's the center of that. There it shows. See how that other line just snapped right onto there and shows you where the circle is so we don't actually have to draw construction lines. A lot of things are very intuitive. So left click and we're gonna drag out the circle and we're going to put in our dimensions, backspace, 1.375, enter. There we go. We got our two parts here. Slower way to draw it, but you learn different skills doing that. Faster way to draw it, of course, you learn different ways to do it as well. So one thing I want to show you guys also, if you mirror of one hole like we did earlier, and you mirror all your parts, or you do the rectangle bolt pattern and it's all basically based off of one hole what you can do is you can zoom in here and see this dimension here we can actually change that dimension to anything we want let's just go for 0.5 hit enter and it changes all the holes to half inch holes because that is our original hole we drew and whatever we size that to, they all follow. It's kind of a cool way if you're doing something, you want to rechange a hole. Instead of drawing each individual hole separately, you would have to go and equal them or change the dimensions on each one. We want to go backspace out of here because we don't want to keep that dimension. But just a simple little thing I want to point out that you can do. This program has a ton of features on here. We are not really utilizing many of them on this first drawing here. We're just going really simple. Another thing that you can do that I use a lot for a lot of parts and pieces is the fillet. It's super nice because this saves you so much time after you cut a part instead of bench grinding or angle grinding to round the corners like you would if you cut everything out with an angle grinder or a bandsaw. You can hit fillet and it saves you so much time for fabricating and it takes off the sharp edges of things. So we're going to go up here to this tool, fillet. We're going to click that. You come right over here to the corner, hit that. And you can set in your size and you can backspace or you can come over here to this little drop down menu and we're just going to go for a quarter inch fillet. We're going to go around here and we're just going to click all the corners, left click them. And there we go. We got our fillets. Now, one thing I don't like to do is add fillets to a part if I'm going to redesign it and alter it later. I found for copying and changing your user quarter, corner references and the way I like to do things is just make a copy of a part and fill it that and that might be my finished part but if I want to go back through and alter it I have an original one without filleted corners. That's just the way I do it. So we're going to backspace out of all those fillets here and I'll show you how to make a copy of a part and then we're going to, from there, we're going to actually move on to saving this and wrap up this video. And then the next video will get more complex with it. So say we want to copy a part here, a whole entire part. We want to fill it that one. Like I said, I like to make a copy of something. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. We're going to hold down. I think it's a left button. Yep. And then we're going to drag a box around this thing. And once we get it boxed in just the part we want, we're going to let go of the left button. Now we're going to go onto the piece where it's bluish purple and we're going to right click 
and we got to delete if you want to delete the whole part we don't want to move that you're going to want to hit move slash copy now this is important you before you try to move this part you want to hit a copy down here you hit copy now right up here this control right here you can rotate the part by grabbing and holding left button down and rotating it around you can freehand move with this one, which means it's not going to be gridded out anymore. You can move only vertically, or you can move horizontally. So we're going to make just a copy, and we're going to move it horizontally. So I'll show you guys that. See, we made a copy of that part. And you can also put in, this is a 4-inch part. It's already represented to move in that direction, so we can actually just backspace and hit 5. And now we have a copy of it. We hit Enter. And we got another copy of it set to the side. Like I said, if we didn't have two identical parts sitting right here, I would just make a copy of a part and fill it the corners and do a test cut and see how you like it or if it's what you want. Um, final thing we want to do here is save this. So what we're going to do up here, we're going to go up to the little save icon up here. We're going to name it. Bearing. Test. That's all we're going to call it. And I'm just going to save it right in this location right here. You can make different locations and you can make different files and stuff. And all we have to do is hit save. Now, one thing I like to do on here is a lot of different ways to save, but that's about the simplest way. But say we want to fill it this part, make alterations to this. Let's go over here. We'll just hit this with a quarter inch. Hit all these corners. And say we just worked on this part here and we're done. We'll use the escape tool. We fill it at that piece. We want to resave this over our original one. You can go up to hit save, and we should be able to. Oh, I'm offline right now. I don't have any internet. That's not good. Okay. So, what you do is when we do that, we can save that part basically when I'm actually online, and uh, you can actually just hit a different version. I wish this was actually working right now. So I would show you guys. Let me see if I can fix that up. All right, sorry about that. I have really bad internet. It cuts out. I have Starlink, and it doesn't work very good out here. We're in a rural area. It's always cutting in, cutting out. I wouldn't recommend Starlink until they actually got it figured out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to save. We've already saved it once. And you can rename a different version of it up here, but I just usually hit this milestone mark, and it says V2, and I hit OK. I'm always usually building upon things. There's a lot of different ways to save files on here, and there's a lot of different ways people like to save files on here. But for me, I basically, like say I'm working on the Pinsgauer 6x6 bodywork, all the sheet metal. I will do a sheet metal file, and I will just start drawing in this vast area different sheet metal parts and copies of them and variations and I'll just draw one giant file and when I go to make tool pass and extrude things I can extrude off of that individual part of that big file it'll make more sense as we get more videos done around here all right you guys probably getting long here we should probably wrap this one up uh, like I said this is just a really basic introduction not to bog you guys too much uh, I would say highly recommend to watch this on one device like another computer or your iPhone and then follow along, try to figure out how to use all this. Oh, offline mode again. There is uh, that wonderful Starlink. Cuts on and off like that all the time. Sorry. Anyways, just venting. That's really frustrating not having much internet out here. And this is a cloud-based program, so it's very helpful to have internet with it. All right, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Sorry, it's a long topic. It's really something I want to explain slowly so you guys can understand and figure out how to draw with this. Once you do figure this out, you're going to love having the Langmuir Systems table. That Crosswire Pro is awesome. I've been really happy with it. I know you guys have seen a lot of my videos of me cutting. If you haven't, at the end of this video, I'll put some links to me cutting with that and some of the projects I've built with it. All right, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Till next time, guys. Take care. Bye.